Hey everyone, welcome back to Living Electric. We are doing our Eevee villain origin stories. I'm just kidding. It's not really the our villain, villain origin stories. <laughs> yes, our villain <laughs> origin stories. I gotta tell you, coming up to this episode recording, I've been wanting to say that for like a week. <laughs> planning the joke for that one. Yes. Month. Yep. So it is, it's now out and now we have to talk about our villain stories. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we have a special uh, two part series essentially where we are discussing our own EV origin stories, and this episode is all about Alex. So I will yep. let you take it away, and I will uh, interrupt when I feel like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I hope you like the sound of my voice better than Brandon's for the sake of this episode. Um, <laughs> you can skip my episode. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, if you like Brandon's voice better than listen to the next episode, if you like my <laughs> voice, just keep listening. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, we, I got this idea cause I was listening to, uh, how to money the other day. One of the other podcasts I listened to, um, obviously living electric is number one. Nobody's going to top us right now. Um, <laughs> nope. but I listened to, to the their moon. podcast a decent amount and they did a, uh, their like basically their money origin story of like kind of how they became personal finance and like money interested. So I thought it would be a good idea to kind of do the same for us and talk about our EV origin story. Like what led us to now both of our careers in the EV industry and also just like kind of what piqued our interest and like really got us interested in EVs initially. So um, that was part of the inspiration for the episode. We also got a, uh, I got a DM on Instagram from Joel G. Uh, he said, hey, Alex, wanted to throw over a podcast idea. I'm currently looking for opportunities to move from my current industry to working in the clean transportation slash renewable energy slash et cetera industry. <laughs> Would love to hear about the experience you and Brandon have getting into that industry, positives, negatives, how you got into it, tips slash networking ideas, et cetera. Thanks. Love the show. So. Thanks, Joel, for that idea. I think we're going to kind of meld the two with some kind of advice about yeah. how we got into the industry, um, whether we like it or dislike it, and uh, maybe some pros and cons about the industry and just kind of how we got there in the first place. So, yep. Especially um, the et cetera industry. I feel like yeah. we should really touch base on that. that. It's very much, it's very, <laughs> <Yeah>. well, <laughs> it's very, as, as I think we're both finding up out, it is very much an et cetera industry. Like it, it, is. it encompasses so many different things. It's not just yep. like EVs. It is, it's software, it's hardware, it's all this stuff really coming together. So it's been, it's been interesting. <laughs> yes. And it, it's big enough to keep us busy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. Um, yeah. I was telling Brandon, I just got off, uh, Got off work at like six today. I immediately went and worked out, came back, showered, and like just got out of the shower like twenty five minutes ago. And now we're back. We're now we're on the podcast, so yep. we're gr we're grinding right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna start. Uh, probably I don't know how early you're gonna start your story, but I'm going all the way back to my freshman year of high school. So okay, this is twenty eleven. Like this is twenty eleven for me. <laughs> I feel like we need like the the wave transition with like wah, like you know fairy tale sounds or something. I yeah. Don't know. The yeah. other podcast I listen to is uh, is uh, stuff you should know. Have you listened to that podcast before? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They they call it the Wayback Machine, where they like hop oh, in their time yeah. machine and like go yeah. back in time. <laughs> so that's what, that's what we here. need. <laughs> yep. So we're we're going back to look at freshman year of high school, Alex. Um, this is when I think I first really got interested in engineering specifically i had always been like really smart in math and science and that's kind of like the building blocks of becoming an engineer is science and math um because it really kind of melds the two but that year it was the first year i took a lot of like engineering specific classes um the high school i was going to i don't know if you knew this but i i had my freshman year of high school in south carolina actually Oh, um, no, I, didn't I, know lived, that. I lived there for one year because my dad got a job there um, that didn't end up working out and we ended up moving back to, to Indianapolis. But my freshman year of high school, I went to high school in South Carolina. Giant high school had like over a thousand per class. Um, and oh my God. yeah, just what? gigantic. But the good thing was, is they had a lot more classes and more more opportunities for taking different types of classes so i took an like intro to engineering class as a freshman um 
And that's, that's like cool. when I started learning how to do like CAD design and like do that kind of the engineering process, which was like super cool to me. And it was like, uh, I'd always watched like tinkering videos on YouTube and like always been interested in that. So actually being able to do something like that really like got me excited <laughs> and kind of, <laughs> kind of set me on that path to becoming an engineer. So well, especially in high school to have that I opportunity. I mean, most people get stuck in social studies. Like. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I was bummed when we ended up leaving because they actually had, they almost had like majors kind of at that high school. Like you could declare a like concentration almost of like what your classes were going to be tailored to. So I could have taken wow. like even more advanced engineering classes in high school, like before a lot of people even get exposed to that stuff. That's incredible. Yeah, it was, it was really neat. That was one of my like probably favorite classes I ever took. Cause we had, we like got all the way into like 3d printing. Like we were learning how to 3d print stuff by the end of it. And this was in 2011 when like 3d printing was brand new. Yeah. I was about <laughs> <So>. to say, <laughs> wow. Um, what, a, what an incredible high school. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It, it was a lot of fun, but that really kind of cemented my, my interest in engineering at the time. I, um, wasn't really into EVs as much, but I was aware of, Tesla. I had seen the the Tesla Roadster came out in like 2008 ish, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's around yep. the time it it came out. Um, and I had also seen like some images of the Tesla Model S prototype because that was out at the time. So I, I was kind of aware of Tesla. I hadn't like fully become like fanboy mode like I kind of <laughs> became like before I bought my car. Uh, but I was aware of the company and kind of been following them. So that's 2010. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um freshman year ends we end up moving back to indianapolis where i where i finished out high school and in 2011 i remember hearing about the nissan leaf actually um which was the first year it came out i believe that was like the first model year i think was around 2011 yes and yep. being the nerd i was i signed up for like the email list for uh <laughs> for the nissan leaf <laughs> just to hear more information about it because mm -hmm. like just electric cars in general were s a very very new thing like very bleeding edge technology back then um and i had always kind of wanted i think i kind of skipped ahead with like my my origin story a little bit but i had always it's okay I had always rewind. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had always been uh, been interested in uh, cars, but specifically like alternative fuels for cars. I'm like, there's got to be a better way to operate cars than like just burning stuff every time you want to <laughs> every time you yeah. want to get around. <laughs> like I thought, I as like the the engineering mind was kind of becoming molded. I was like, there's got to be a more efficient way to do this. There's got to be a better way to do it. Um, so 2011, start kind of following the LEAF news. That's when I started kind of more following EVs a lot closer. Mm -hmm. um, I was kind of brainstorming this last night, and I remember vividly I got, uh, we had an Xbox at the time, and we got Forza Motorsport 4, I think was the name of it. Um, yeah, Forza Motorsport 4. And it was like a racing game you could play on the Xbox, and it had the Tesla Roadster in it. <laughs> wow, I thought you were going to say it had the Nissan Leaf. <laughs> no, it might have, but I mean, the Nissan Leaf compared to the Roadster, um, one of those you want to race around the track, the other yes. uh, <laughs> you yeah. might not want to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um that's so cool. I it played, had the Roadster in it. I know, yeah, because it was it was 2011, so that I think it was a 2.5 they had in the game because Tesla okay. was doing some weird stuff with the Roadster just because they were so limited run and they they kind of had some like different trims they were they were messing around with. But this game had the Roadster, which I thought was so cool. So they had like all these high end cars like Ferraris and Lamborghinis and stuff. You could like hear the engine rumble when you're driving around, and then you like hop in the Roadster and it's like the. Yeah. <laughs> Like this, this <laughs> whirring electric sound going around the, going around the track. Um, but that was like one of my goals in the game. Cause you had to like unlock cars and stuff. So it wasn't like it was just there right away. You had to like beat certain races to unlock cars. And, um, that I remember trying to like beat certain races so I could get the roadster unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that was all I could remember about 2011 were those couple things. Um, 2012 would have been my, I guess, kind of junior year. 
um, of high school. I was driving now. My my first car was a 2006 Ford Taurus. So definitely very attractive vehicle for uh, for <laughs> yeah. a high schooler to be driving around. Um, what color was it? It was silver. Oh, okay. At least it wasn't yeah. that like sky blue color. That they yeah, had. <laughs> it wasn't. It was it was neutral, so it wasn't like terrible. And and I don't mean to complain at all because like my parents bought me that car. Like I would have been happy with anything. So I'm like very grateful that for that. Don't don't make it sound like I'm like a spoiled kid who wanted a <laughs> who wanted like a super nice car. Like I I was very aware of the situation. Like I'm not getting a nice car in high school. Um, <laughs> and so I was driving that at the time. Um, and then, of course, when you get the car, you start kind of looking at, like, what do, I, what do I want as my, like, dream car? I know how to drive mm-hmm. now, but, like, what's going to be, like, my yeah. car that, that, like, I really want to shoot for and really want to be driving every day? So um, it was at this point I started, like, I watched a lot of car videos, and ironically enough, I kind of, like, rediscovered Tesla because of a YouTube video that some Model S owner had shown the door handles on the Model S. And my, like, high school self thought that was the coolest thing ever, that they, like, popped out of the body of the car. Yeah. Because <laughs> I had never seen I had never seen door handles like that. Um, and to this day, I'm still, like, I, I think stuff like that is just so cool for some reason. Just, like, little automatic features on cars is so cool. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm a huge fan of like the Koenigsegg doors. Have you seen those that like flip up, that like flip up vertically? Um, like those are super cool. I love the way the Rivian, uh, like charging port latch, like swivels open. Like I think that's so (laughs) cool. I'm like, those are such minor things in a car, but I think they're really neat. Um, Well, they're dynamic, you know, they're kind of like away from what you're typically used to seeing on cars. Exactly. And, and like, why, why put just like a, a manual latch when you could do something cool that's like automatic and slides open or pops open cool. So yeah. Um, yeah, big fan of that. (laughs) Um, okay. So that's, so that would have been junior year, uh, graduate high school, start looking at colleges and stuff. Um, was pretty decided on electrical engineering at the time. Um, one of my goals, like leaving high school and kind of what I told people was like my dream to do as a career was like get into renewable power. Cause I'm like, everybody needs power. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> it's not going to go away. Like power consumption has continued to climb. Um, we're going to need more power and we're going to need to produce it in a renewable way. So mm-hmm. that's what I kind of settled on electrical engineering. I'm like, I really want to be involved on the renewable energy side of things. Wasn't as interested in the, in, in the automotive industry, just because that was more, all the mechanical engineers were kind of going towards that. And I wasn't as like, it just didn't interest me as much. The mechanical engineering, it, it felt very like, um, not li- I don't want to like throw shade on mechanical engineers at all. It just wasn't for me. Like it, it just didn't mm-hmm. fit my interest. So, um, electrical engineering is what I decided to major in in college. Um, so started that and had always been like very interested in power. That was what I really focused on. I took classes in renewable energy. I took, um, classes on, all the electrical engineering stuff on circuits on like all kinds of just crazy advanced stuff. Wow. (laughs) Um, yeah, it's, if anybody's listening has gone to engineering school, like, you know, like it's just hard. Like, (laughs) um, the, the funniest part about engineering school, I think is the, um, is the fact that you walk into class every day and you leave not understanding anything. (laughs) I feel like like that's adulthood. (laughs) Well, yeah, that's true. Um, but like, it was funny because I would, uh, I would talk to friends and they'd, they'd complain like, Oh, I went into class today. And like, I just didn't understand the lesson. I didn't understand what was going on. I'm like, you understand, like, that's me every day, right? Like every, not, not only every day, it's literally every class I walk into. I don't know what's going on. Like I copy down all the formulas and the equations and like all the notes and stuff. But like, I've got to I got to decompress later and figure out what the heck was going on. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I, I just pictured those like gifts of like the formulas popping in front of people and like <laughs> that's that's exactly how that, it is. It's funny that would um, literally be me in an engineering class. <laughs> it's yeah, it was. That's like one of the hardest. Uh, like my junior year of college was probably the hardest year of like um, not of my life, but like schooling year of my life easily because mm -hmm. I I left uh, I left class I. I played basketball and ran track in college too. So I'd go to practice and then I would go to the engineering lab and not finish up till like 1130 most nights. And that was every day. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, on top of everything else you did in college. Yeah. So <laughs> it was, it was a lot of fun, but also just like a ton of work at the same time. So, um, anyway, I kind of skipped forward there again, but, uh, some EV highlights of college, uh, my freshman year in the fall. So this was like 2014, right after I graduated college, I saw a Tesla Roadster at one of the football games at ONU where I went to school. Wow. Yeah. So I, uh, can, can you give a little context of what, like where ONU is and like how rural it is? Because that's actually yeah. pretty surprising. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, that's the thing. It was like, like you might expect to see that car, maybe like a car show or like out and about in a city or something like that, where like yeah. there's a lot of people, a lot of cars, like it might be in there. But ONU is, it's literally in the middle of a cornfield, the college is like yep. in rural <laughs> Ohio, uh, Northwest Ohio. There's nothing out there but like small towns and cornfields. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I saw that car there was like incredible, especially because it's like, didn't have that much range to begin with so it was i think it has like 200 miles of range if that mm -hmm. like <laughs> yeah yeah no way of fast charging either so no. so <laughs> yeah uh yeah saw it at a football game there and ironically enough they had fa they had parked like in a specific spot so they could run their charger to an outlet that was on some utility pole out there <laughs> oh wow so, <laughs> so they so they so came they were, prepared <laughs> yeah they were plugged in and and it looked like they were probably staying for the day or something because they they drove up and they plugged in and the car had been sitting there for a while it looked like so um but got some pictures of that i'm gonna i'm gonna splice in some pictures throughout the podcast here of of everything i found looking through um but that was so cool because i had never seen a roadster in person in person before and i i still don't think i've seen one since that one like in really? person yeah maybe from afar but not like up close like i had seen that one um and it was super cool it was like i think it was a gray color a bunch of carbon fiber accents like really oh, good nice. looking car yeah um so that was really cool. And nobody else knew what the car was either. So that was kind of cool that I knew yeah. I knew what the car was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that was your start of educating people on electric cars, pretty much. Honestly, yeah. that's You're probably right. Because people are like, what kind of car is this? I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's a Tesla Roadster. Like, they're super rare. And, like, this is a super expensive car, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially back then it was. <laughs> and I thought it was the coolest thing. Like, not everybody was as, like as jazzed about it as I was, but I thought that was the coolest thing ever. So got like a ton of pictures of it. Um, so that was 2014 in the fall, 2015, I think around Christmas break. So this would have been like my sophomore year, I guess like prior to, or yeah, I guess Christmas break of my sophomore year. My dad tells me that his boss's husband recently bought a model S and I'm like, is there any way we can check it out? Yeah. <laughs> um, like now. This is, yeah, yeah, like right now. Um, and this is 2015, mind you. So uh, Model S came out in 2012-ish, I think. Yeah, I think end of 2012, beginning yeah. of 2013. Yeah. So like only a three-year-old car, like the first sedan that Tesla's made. Very new car at the time. So somehow... He arranges for his boss's husband to drive over to our house, and I got to not only sit in a Model S, but also drive a Model S for the first time, <laughs> which, as again, like as a as a young person, was like the coolest thing ever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and this wasn't even a like souped up Model S. I'm pretty sure it was like a Model S 60, like back when they did the 60 kilowatt hour motor. Yeah, yeah. So it was only a rural drive. Yeah, I think uh, it oh, might yeah, have been. Oh, yeah, that's right, because 
Oh, no? I don't was know. Was Dual Motor out? Yeah, it was out. That came out in 2014. Okay. Yeah. It, he bought it used, too, so it might have been okay. It might have been a real-world drive because I think it was a an older It was like a 2013 or 14 Model S. It was a couple of years old. Um, but really good looking car. Um, I was pretty like set at that point. I wanted a Tesla <laughs> after, after driving it. Um, cause where I live in, in Indiana too, there's a bunch of back roads close. So we drove out to like some of the back roads and got to gun it a few times. I'm like, I mean, you're so oh, at I that point. That. So, I bet that was fun. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, and this was right after Tesla had released all the autopilot stuff too. Like right at, cause I think that was around the same time, right? Like 2015. -ish. Yeah. 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 Autopilot one. Yeah. It, 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 yeah. It was, it was autopilot one. It was like the mobilized system. Mm -hmm. Um, but got to try autopilot for the first time. And that was very cool and very nerve wracking at the same yeah. time. <laughs> um, especially for autopilot one, because it did not read like it only it literally only read lane lines so if some lane like <laughs> swerved off to the side the car swerved off to the side uh, yep i have a story for for my episode <laughs> regarding that <laughs> yeah so anyway we we tried autopilot and there was a situation that came up where we were driving and there was like a right turn lane that came up and the car started swerving off to the right so i had to like correct it and like keep it going straight um and it's funny now because now that i have my model three i drive on that road all the time coming home now and i put on autopilot and it does completely fine like it doesn't <laughs> swerve at all off to the side um so that's awesome so tesla has fixed some things with autopilot <laughs> yes <laughs> they probably took that data from that day and you know made sure that yeah. the exact area doesn't happen anymore. implemented it four <laughs> years later um <laughs> Yeah, so that was that was definitely like kind of a a defining like moment in like my being set on getting an EV was after driving driving that Model S and that then like any time before or after that too if we were at the mall or like near a Tesla store I'd always want to go in and check them out like that was like I was pretty set that I wanted a Tesla at that point so um, anytime back to kind of like the dream car. Uh, discussion i had i was pretty set on the model s as like being my first car but i also heard that tesla was going to release this cheaper car so like anytime i told people like what my dream car was i'd say i i want a tesla they're coming out with like a cheaper sedan that's going to be more affordable and that's the car i, I want that's the car i want to like buy after i graduate um then comes 2016 which I think is uh, where our paths might cross slightly in uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> in uh, in the Tesla world, but that's when they did the Model Three reveal. Mm -hmm. So I remember watching this in my dorm in college uh, and thinking, like, I want to go down to Columbus tomorrow and put a deposit down on a Model Three, um, which I think was it was a thousand dollars, right? I'm pretty yep. sure. Yeah. Which is crazy to think that it was a thousand dollars at the time, but now it's only like a hundred. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Uh, could you only do it in person at that point, or could you do it online? Uh, I think it was online okay. uh, because because I remember during the live event, like the reservation numbers were like shooting up, and that was yeah. like eleven p.m. Eastern time. So like, <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. We didn't have lines at eleven p.m. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, so I saw that reveal and I'm like, okay, I like this is what I want. This is exactly the car I want. Um, I loved the like concepts matte black model. Yep. Um, do you remember that one? Mm -hmm. uh, yep, that was my favorite one too. <laughs> yeah, I think I think a lot of people really like that. I'm like, if I can have that exact car, like I am set. You can you can have all my money. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the problem was being in college, I didn't have a lot of money. So, <laughs> so I, uh, I was very set on like driving to Columbus to like put my name into the Model 3 uh, reservation line. And I think people were going in person because you could get earlier in the line or something like that. I think that's why people I, were doing that. I can't remember. I can't remember honest. why people end up, yeah. ended up lining up when you could do it online. But anyway... Yeah. Um, oh, oh! At the at the beginning of it, you had to do it in person. Then they opened online reservations. Oh, at okay. The, I think at the end of the event, 
that's when they open the gotcha. Island reservations. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so I was I was wanting to drive to Columbus and because ONU is like an hour and a half from Columbus um, and give them a thousand dollars to put my reservation in. So I'm like, this is the car I want after college. Like I'll put my reservation in now. I'll start saving money and be stuck with that and like get that car. Ended up like kind of tossing it back and forth. And like, uh, I'm like, ah, it's, it's still a lot of money for me. Like at the time, a thousand dollars was like, that's a lot of meals. Yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of, uh, <laughs> it's a lot of other stuff. Uh, and, yep. <laughs> uh, and I had like very little money at the time. Right. You're like, you're in college, you're basically spending your money on food. You can't work really, uh, especially with the schedule I had. And like, I was like, I just got to save the money. I'll just kind of wait it out. And like my time will come for that. So ended up not putting in a reservation. I thought about it for like weeks though. I'm like, I could, I could now put in a reservation cause they opened up the online one. Like, <laughs> Do I have a thousand dollars? No, I've only got like fifteen hundred dollars, and I don't want to lose. <laughs> I don't want to lose all my money, <laughs> so uh, didn't end up putting a reservation down. Is the the point of that story? And then it kind of it came time for graduation, and I was then looking at cars to buy for my like for driving the rest of my like after I graduated. So started looking at Model S's because the used Model S's were cheaper than the new Model 3's and I think still yep. are in some cases. <laughs> yes, yep. you can get some good deals on you used S's. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but the more I kind of looked into it, I'm like, I know I need 300 miles of range. Like, I don't want to go under that. Um, I want dual motor. I want the refreshed X or S because I don't like the look of the old nose cone. <laughs> like, I started oh, kind of... <laughs> I love the old is that, one. Is that a controversial <laughs> take right there? Uh, I I mean, for me personally, you know, being like an O, well, I don't want to say OG Tesla employee, because <laughs> I wasn't, but like, I, I like the nose cone. Like, it actually took me a bit to get used to it without the nose cone. Really? So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, each their own. We can yeah. do separate podcasts for now, and that's okay. <laughs> that's no. why we're having separate episodes. <laughs> yeah, right. Um. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is your story. Yeah. I'll shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, anyway, the uh I end up not uh end up not buying a Tesla at a gra- at a graduation. It was just it was going to be too much money. I just once I did the math and stuff, I'm like this is going to be stretching myself too thin. It's fresh out of school. I'm trying to build up like my own personal savings and stuff, like buying a even the $35,000 car at the time just was not smart. Mm-hmm. Um and ended up deciding on a cheaper sports car um i still wanted i still wanted a sportier car I, I still like performance i'm more comfortable in like a sportier car too i don't like being in like bigger cars for some reason even though i'm like six four and like a bigger <laughs> dude i don't uh i don't like bigger cars which is like complete opposite of what most people would think and i also just like the performance aspect because i feel way safer like a car i can maneuver and like do stuff in traffic feels way safer Mm -hmm. to me than a car i can't get like i can't move out of the way or move around people yeah i i agree with that one (laughs) yeah and so i ended up deciding on a scion frs so i ended up buying that um i think the it was spring of my senior year so i had like basically enough money to make the make the few payments before I graduated and actually started making big money like as an engineer um and stuck with that car I was like that's still I think probably one of my poor money decisions and just car decisions in general because I I think I got too caught up in like having a cool car after I graduated (laughs) (laughs) and I don't think it helps that like other engineers that graduated from ONU like bought a similar car to that and i like yeah. kind of like almost the keeping up with the joneses like I, I felt like i needed to have a cooler car when i graduated because i was like make an engineer money i gotta like have the cool car and it's like yeah, yeah. i could have easily just bought like a cheap like camry or something yeah. lived with, like paid off a majority of it and <laughs> and like <Yeah>. just drove <laughs> it um without a payment or anything so mm-hmm. probably wasn't the best decision uh, bought that in 2018, owned it for <clears throat> roughly a year, 
I think a little over a year actually. Um, but that was like a fifteen thousand dollar car, so like nothing crazy at all. Wow. Like really cheap yeah. car generally. Um, I forgot how cheap cars used to be. <laughs> honestly, yeah. I'm like, and that was kind of my budget, like what I budgeted for a car too. Is like anything above fifteen thousand, like I'm just not going to be able to afford with the. Um, the funny part is because I was like, I was living by myself after I graduated, so like that's a single rent payment I got to pay by myself. I don't have a roommate or anything. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> like you start kind of doing the math and budgeting, you're like, yeah. I don't have a lot of money left over. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> yeah, all the priorities come together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like big kind of not really like slap in the face, but like it's it's definitely a reality check when you start paying for everything your own um yep <laughs> and your parents aren't aren't making meals for you or, or yeah. like uh paying for anything so anyway end up uh end up buying the the frs drove it till like 2019 time frame um and it was at that point i started doing the math and i'm like i was dating mallory at the time she was graduating in 2019 i'm like now that I've got a roommate, <laughs> yeah. I, my rent payment is going to be cut in half. <laughs> I'm completely taking away like everything from the relationship. That's like the first thing I thought of from. <laughs> I just love how you boiled the title down to just roommate. <laughs> Like. Yeah. <laughs> so Mallory doesn't listen to podcasts, so it's fine. Um, I was gonna say, I hope your walls are thick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yes, my my beautiful fiance. We're now we're now engaged, getting married in a in a year now. Um, no longer moved, roommate. No oh. longer roommate. Now uh, now fiance. Um, upgraded. <laughs> and, uh, anyway. Um, so she moved in and I started doing the math and I'm like, okay, now that like my rent payment is essentially cut in half, I will probably be able to afford a nicer car now. Um, Cause that was really what I kind of had my sights set on when I graduated. I'm like, I knew I wanted a Tesla. Like that, that mm-hmm. is my dream car. That is what I like. That was my financial motivation basically from, <laughs> from 2018 <laughs> onward. Um, <laughs> And around like January 19, uh, 2019, that's when I started really getting big into EVs just in general. So that's when I started my YouTube channel was January of 2019. I joined like the drive electric Columbus group around that time, really started kind of like digging into the weeds a little bit more around EVs, Mm -hmm. um, doing like not even networking, just kind of like going to these events, seeing what it's about, um, getting involved, like, and that's like, this might be getting kind of into the advice section of, uh, of this episode, but like that just getting involved, like helps you so much and opens so many doors. Um, like going to those events from 2019 onward, I've met like so many interesting people from the EV industry to just regular owners that do a lot of neat stuff. Um, it's very educational too, cause you see different people's perspectives, like, um, especially ones that aren't like specific brand focused. Like I think a lot of the Tesla meetups, like it's a lot of just Tesla owners. So like you only really see Tesla vehicles, but like the non Tesla events and just the EV vet events in general, you really get to see certain people's perspectives on like, why did they buy an EV? Why did they buy this specific EV? Um, mm-hmm. and I guess that's the case with the Tesla events too, because everybody buys it for a slightly different reason. So like having yeah. those conversations is really cool. And I'm sure like your experience is the same. Like every, like some people are in it for environmentalism. Like they like a like low emission car or no emission car. Others it's like, this was just a luxury car. I thought was cool. And I like the performance. (laughs) So yeah, Yeah, it's incredible to like learn everybody's reason why they drive electric. (laughs) Yeah. Which, which I think is like a really cool part of, of the industry and just like the community in general is, is everybody's perspective on that. Um, but anyway, got really involved and really started digging into EVs in 2019. Um, and I don't want to say my YouTube channel was like the only reason I got into EVs, but it was a big reason I got more into EVs because I started researching, like, I'd always really wanted to be like a YouTube person. Like I liked editing videos. I liked shooting videos. I liked, um, just kind of that whole process. I liked editing 
And I realized to be successful on YouTube, you really have to like choose a niche and like stick to that. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm like, I had done like all kinds of random videos, like during throughout high school and college and like nothing I was ever really like super into, um, that I like really felt good about. But then like in 2019, I really hit it hard. I'm like, all right, I'm going to commit for the next year. I'm going to try to put out a video a week related to EVs. That was like the, that was the goal. Um, I was like, that's going to be my niche. That's going to be my, um, what I talk about on my YouTube channel is just EV stuff. And I can share my story of, uh, researching EVs, new EVs that come out, um, my process of buying an EV eventually. So that kind of led into eventually buying my model three. So I was like, it was a stretch financially. I I definitely could afford it, but it was like more than I would have normally spent on a car. But I'm like, if I buy this model three, like that's just a ton of content I'll be able to make. Like, yeah from not only the buying experience, but like picking up the car to like going on road trips, charging, like all that stuff. Um, And I had kind of been talking to family and friends like throughout that whole year, like I'm gonna buy a Tesla in the next few months, like it's coming, like I I really wanna buy one. And the amount of like skepticism I was was met with (laughs) when I started, uh, when I started kind of like telling people my plan with that was incredible. So that only like, that really like cemented like, all right, this is a good decision actually buying this car Mm -hmm. because I can help educate a lot of people about like my experience. Like I am, I'm a normal person. I don't have like any crazy life. Like I, I am a very regular person that's just interested in EVs and I can share my experience. Um, and the other interesting part is I didn't have home charging. So I was like, all right, how is that going to work? Yeah. <laughs> um, and I won't get into my whole like home charging experience, but the other beneficial factor was uh, when I was kind of crunching the numbers uh, financially is I was spending like $200 a month on gas when I budgeted Jeez. it out. I'm like, that is just mm-hmm. crazy. I'm like, I don't even live that far from work. And like <laughs> I'm spending yeah. $200 <laughs> a month on gas. Yeah. Granted, granted, the FRS took premium gas, <laughs> but <laughs> oh, I, I didn't know that. That's, yeah, that's yeah, news it takes to me. premium gas, which at the time in 2019, I think was like 3.30 a gallon or something like that, which is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, which is pretty crazy, but not, not like yeah. crazy expensive. Um, I mean, that's a cup of Starbucks. <laughs> That's true. That's how I view money. You know, how much <laughs> coffee can I buy? How many Starbucks is this? <laughs> yeah, right. And not even just coffee, just Starbucks. <laughs> we're, we're standardizing the U.S. dollar. Instead of the U.S. dollar, it's going to be a cup of Starbucks coffee. <laughs> the new, the new the, U.S. standard. The new, right. The new digital currency. <laughs> um. Anyway, yeah. So that was another part of it. I'm like, I spend $200 a month on gas. I'm like... If I buy an EV, my workplace has free charging. So automatically I'm dropping $200 off what I pay a month, like switching to an EV. So I'm like, okay, like what can I make my monthly payment? Um, Like all this stuff. I won't get into all the financials because everybody's got kind of different views on that. But anyway, crunch the numbers. I'm like, this will work. Like I can meet the monthly payment. I'll be able to afford it. And the other nice thing is too, like my, my income continues to go up too so like that that helps <laughs> right <Yeah. laughs> so you lock in a monthly payment but if your income continues to go up then like yep. it's still the same monthly payment so ended up buying the car uh bought my model three in uh what month was it it was september of 2019 so this was kind of nine months into my youtube journey as well so i did a video on ordering my model three um, which is still like one of my higher performing videos, which is pretty cool. Um, and then ended up picking it up like a month later. I'm like, this is, this is great. <laughs> um, cause this was before, I think I got my car at exactly the right time too, because it was right after they, um, right after they added autopilot as included, Cause it used to be a paid upgrade to get just basic autopilot. Oh, yeah, you had to pay that's like, right. Yeah. You had to pay like three grand or something like that to get basic autopilot. Yeah. So they added basic autopilot to the car. 
Um, the prices had dropped a little bit as they kind of ramped up production. Um, demand still wasn't crazy high yet. So when I picked up my car, I was like the only one at the service center at the time when I picked <laughs> it up. There was nobody like waiting behind me. I got to spend like 20 or 30 minutes with the car, like shooting some video of me picking it up. Um, pre-pandemic too so that was good <laughs> yes um, <laughs> those were the days <laughs> yeah the before times yep. um and uh yeah so ended up getting my model three and uh it was really cool buying that car at the time because it still was so new even the model 3, even though the model three was a couple of years old at that point it still was just such a new car like so many mm-hmm. people were interested in it um and it was just a cool time to have an EV. Not that it still isn't. Obviously, we're going to yeah. like, it's always a cool time to have an EV. Um, and it's a it's great past day. the prime. Yeah. No, it's <laughs> it's <best for laughs> this is our last sailed. episode. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mission accomplished, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but but it was, it was really cool getting the car at the time I did because EVs were so new. There was still, like, a lot of education to be done and, have it, mm-hmm. and like, having my car at that time to really, like, show people what it's like owning one was, was super cool. And, and not that it still isn't because, like, it's an awesome car. I still love driving it. It still just does so much, so much cool stuff. Um, and, yeah, that's, that's, like, I guess back to, like – more professionally now um driving my car for a while i was kind of getting um not sick of but kind of like i was open to other opportunities working i've been working at the same company i've been working at since i graduated so i was like okay i like i like this but it's definitely not like it's not going to be a long-term career for me um at least in the role i was in it was super advanced um like just a lot of stuff went over my head. It felt like engineering school again. And I'm like, I feel like I should be past this at this point. Like I should be kind of taking more control and like understanding things better. And it still felt like I was just like, I spent 90% of my time trying to figure out what, what was going on instead of actually getting work done. Um, mm-hmm. which can be really frustrating. Like for somebody like me that likes to get stuff done. Like I think it definitely takes a special type of person to spend like a majority of their time learning or researching or stuff like that. Um, and not to say that like learning isn't something you should continue to do, but (laughs) yes, always learn. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, but I get, I get what you're saying. Yeah. So, um, anyway, I was, I was kind of open to opportunities at that point. Um, had talked to a few other companies and just like, wasn't, uh, nothing really like blew me away in terms of like it, nothing was good enough to switch. It was like something had to be demonstrably better, pay me better and, <laughs> yeah. and like be a better fit for me than my current company to actually make that switch. Um, that was a was, good word that you just what's said. What's that? The word that you just said? What the did mon- I say? The, the demonstrously or something like that? Demonstrably? Yeah. Yes, I've never heard that word before. <laughs> I've been that using that good, a lot. I've been using that a lot recently. Um, yeah. Demonstrably, demonstrably. Yeah. Um, I'm writing that one down. <laughs> <laughs> Bring that up for the next meeting. Um, right. I don't even know what it means. I'm just gonna start saying it. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically like it has to be like proven to be better, or like mm. like you have to be able to de- demonstrate that it's a much better thing or opportunity or something like that now i see the origin word yeah yeah. okay makes sense um but i'm i'm very like risk averse and like if if something is working fine and like it's a good fit i'm not going to take like a big risk to go somewhere else and like make less money or something like that Mm -hmm. to end up uh um to maybe pan out in the future so i'm like okay um there are a couple of opportunities that came up, but nothing really like fit what I was looking for. And then I started looking and I'm like, I, I really want to make the jump to the EV industry. Like this really excites me. It's such a new thing. Um, it's finally at the point where people are actually hiring now, like in the past, like yep. the auto companies were hiring obviously, but like the surrounding industry is still so new around charging and, everything like that. And the charging part of EVs really like is my favorite part about EVs. Like I love the cars. Um, I'm definitely like a car person in a way, 
but nothing like is cooler to me than the chargers which is like such a nerdy thing but like i no, think I, char- I, I agree with you <laughs> yeah like the the yeah. charging portion of that especially because it is a little bit complicated like it's not cut and dry with charging and like we've explained mm-hmm. this on multiple episodes like there's so many nuances with charging and being somebody with a utility background i kind of had that background in power in electricity in all that kind of stuff and had the electrical engineering degree i'm like and have this interest in evs i'm like i'm set up really well actually to make (laughs) to make this jump into the ev industry yeah um so i ended up applying for the job at green lots which is where i work at now i'm a sales engineer there and that uh it was funny too because i interviewed i applied for the job because I was looking for EV related jobs and EV charging related jobs. And I could never find anything in Columbus because Columbus is just like, I mean, it's not a tech heavy city. It's not LA. It's not San Francisco. Yeah. Like that's where a lot of these charging companies are based. And that is where green lots is headquartered. They're headquartered in LA. So it's <laughs> like, I don't really want to move to LA just to like work for an EV charging company. And The fact is we're going to need people in other territories too, right? Working on this stuff. (laughs) It's not, it's not all just California and West coast where all this stuff is going on. Like people are buying EVs in big numbers in Midwest States now. Mm -hmm. So, um, I applied for the job and it was like super late at night. It was like 11 PM or something like that. I was like going to bed and I found a listing on LinkedIn for it and they had the easy apply. And I'm like, that's awesome. So yeah. <laughs> you just hit the yep. literally like one button apply for the, for the role. Yeah. And I wasn't like, I had, I had applied for some other EV charging industry jobs too. I never really heard anything back. Um, but applied for them ended up calling me back and it seemed like a great fit because I had the, uh, I had the, uh, it's sales engineering too, which is like a whole separate thing than normal engineering. Like it sounds similar, but it's really not the same. Um, but you, I, it really like aligned to my skills really well because my favorite thing to do and like what we do on this podcast, what I do on my YouTube channel is break down, super advanced topics so that normal people without the engineering background, without the EV background can understand them and know what's going on. So, and that's really what my role boils down to is, is helping educate people on that kind of stuff. So (laughs) that's like, it really was like just a great fit. It all really came together. And again, it was, it was a demonstrably better opportunity than, (laughs) than, uh, than my current role. So I ended up making the switch and, and it's been great so far. So that's awesome. I, I do want to say just really fast back to that vocab word. I think, <laughs> I think what we should do every episode moving forward, have like a little like counter every time you say that word, <laughs> just have like a little chime. And then like at the end of the season, be like, Alex said it this many times. <laughs> <laughs> sure that won't annoy anybody. Um, I'll just keep track, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that sounds like quite a journey. I mean, like oh going from like be- interested yeah. well technically well essentially playing uh, you know a video game with the roadster and then taking you what like 10 11 years into your position now yeah it's it's funny because like i don't know if you've heard the expression like you you uh overestimate you overestimate what you can do in a year but you underestimate what you can do in a decade And like, that is like incredibly true. I think, I think the timeframes might be slightly different, but it's like, um, I think sometimes we get very caught up in like the short term success or like short term things happening. And you Mm -hmm. kind of forget to take a step back and realize like how long your life actually is and like how much stuff actually happens and how long things take to progress. Like, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cuz like you said, like this this didn't happen overnight where I like jumped in the EV industry. It's literally been like a decade coming. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> yeah. And have you had those moments recently where you kind of like step, you know, like aside yourself and like look inwards on your life and realize like I've done a lot, you know. Yeah. There's still more, but like have you had those moments? Definitely. Definitely. And now that I'm like kind of the point where I'm like I'm older, like it's it feels weird to say but like i'm 26 how do you think i feel (laughs) (laughs) i'm 30 (laughs) um yeah but it it is super industry and interesting 
like looking back and I'm like, like 10 years ago I was in high school. Like that's pretty crazy to like think about. And I was like 16 and I just got my license and now I'm like here. Um, Yeah. It's, it's pretty nuts. Yeah. I I saw this TikTok to, to go back of what you said with like the, the time span and how you kind of like take, you know, time essentially i feel like some people take time for granted like the amount of things you can do in you know in a year yeah in 10 years uh, i saw this tiktok there was somebody who said she's 50 and the advice she would give to her 25 year old is take your time just yeah. take your time yeah and it's it really is amazing when you realize how much stuff you can do yeah yeah and, and, or have and done too yeah exactly and i think it's good mm-hmm. to like balance that too because like I, t- I tend to be the person that like pushes myself really hard and like thinks like I'm constantly feeling like I'm running out of time. Like if I don't do this immediately, like it's never going to work out. And like, like you're saying, it, it is important to kind of take that step back and really think like, all right, if I don't like accomplish this now, like there's the rest of my life, I can still accomplish it. Like it'll all yep. work out. <laughs> like we yeah. can, like it can still, it can still happen. Like, even if you're like with my YouTube channel is a perfect example. I'm like, all right, I'm going to commit. Like, I think just making that upfront commitment is a huge thing. Like I committed in 2019. I'm like, I'm going to try this for a year. I'm going to commit that year. If I get to the end of that year and I'm just not feeling it, it's not working out. I'll just stop doing it. But I can, Mm -hmm. at least I can tell myself, Hey, I I gave it a, I gave it a go for a year. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So yeah, it's important to try. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. We're getting like philosophical now, so yeah, that's not to say. <laughs> well, you guys, you guys are now seeing a totally different side of us. Like, I, I think that's why I'm excited to do these video or these uh, not videos, these episodes because we get to, um, you know, like demonstrate like a totally different aspect of our lives. Yeah, to to our listeners, and For I sure. think that's important, especially as we establish living electric. So definitely, definitely, yeah, get to know us. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think, I think we wrapped up pretty well here, but, um, Mm -hmm. I guess kind of look, if we want to kind of do the opposite and like look forward, like what's next for, for me or for like my EV career is, um, there's just so many opportunities right now. I've realized in the EV industry, um, people are hiring like crazy. If you do want to get into the industry, I think now is the perfect time because we're kind of on that, uh, that kind of exponential growth curve right now we're eventually going to get like where it's just crazy but then i think eventually it's going to kind of level off when we when we hit that uh when we hit that point where we've kind of got everybody we need but like right now is the perfect time to hop in it's just growing so quickly there's every company's hiring (laughs) there's (laughs) we're hiring if you want to apply for a job with us like we need people um Chargeway's hiring too, actually. We're <laughs> so. Oh, you are okay. Yep, yep. We're looking for a sales salesperson. So okay, there you go. Yep. So, yeah, anybody. Lots, I mean, <laughs> lots of opportunities. <laughs> Tons of opportunities out there. So. Yep. Um, in terms of like resume stuff too, like I kind of touched on a little bit, but like being educated is like your biggest asset. I think. Um, mm-hmm being educated and being connected are like the two biggest assets. Like that's what people look, look for when they're, when they're hiring. It's like, who do you know? And, and yes. And yeah. what do you know? <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, and, and we'll touch on this in my episode, but I used to be a professional IT recruiter, so I can definitely give some advice when it comes to like resumes and, and can, you know, networking and stuff like that. Yeah. I'll defer to you yeah. you on that then. Yeah. <laughs> so, cool. um, keep, we'll wrap keep you up. hanging for the next one. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So this is our cliffhanger. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's that's my my EV origin story. Um, I always tell people I've been driving electric since 2019. I'm never going back. So um, excited <laughs> for the future. <laughs> All righty. Um, did you want? Did you want me to do the outro for that? Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm trying to think of how to, how to do that. Oh, um, lead into yours now. Yeah. My, my villain story. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can do that. All right. That was the, that was the hero story. We're going to get to Brandon's yeah. villain story. Now. <laughs> yes. yes. I, I hope you guys are excited for this tumultuous at that. There is a good vocab word. Um, tumultuous journey into Brandon's dark and electrified mind. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) We'll see you guys in the next episode. (laughs) Yep. Sounds good.